Hi there, welcome to the Building Your Tiny House Dream video tutorial series. I'm Chris, I run a company called Tiny Industrial, and along with the book of the same title, I'll be showing you how to build this exact house. So follow along, I'll be releasing a new video every Wednesday, and hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey there, welcome back. This week we're putting in the front window. I teach you everything you need to know about these uh, used RV windows and how to get them integrated into your structure. All right, so this is slightly more clean RV window. I bought this on eBay and I use these for the front of the gypsy wagon. And the reason is for, well, there's a couple of reasons. So it's a used RV window, a couple benefits. The glass is tinted, you can view that as a benefit or not. The glass is tempered, that's definitely a benefit. It's gonna go in the front uh, drive direction, drive facing direction of the gypsy. So it's gonna be sort of above the bed on the opposite end from the door. And I like to get these because this is a, a window that's designed not only to be opened, which happens like that. And you got the screen over here. Some of them, some of these windows that you find on eBay don't have the screens. I would always go for one that has a screen because otherwise you can't get that cross ventilation without letting the bugs in. So it's got that. Great. The other thing it has and does is it serves as an emergency exit. So um, these latches here, they unlatch. And then, and then the whole window folds out. So then you have push the whole window out, climb out, and it becomes an emergency exit. That is something that I would suggest everybody has in their gypsy wagon. So if you look at the door, I'm sure that's a way to get out. But what if for whatever reason you can't get out by the door, then you need a second way to get out. and the small 12 by 12 side windows that I'm going to be putting into this will not be suitable for that. So therefore, I like to have a second way out and this is it. So it kind of um, has to meet those, those three purposes. It has to be, well, a window. You have to be able to open it in terms of having a screen and some cross ventilation. Third reason is that it serves as an emergency exit. So those, those are the criteria. They're not terribly expensive. Uh, it is going to be the most expensive window in the gypsy wagon, but you know, you can pick them up for, uh, for about, well, under a hundred dollars. The problem is, is that they cost a, a good amount of money to ship. So if you're lucky enough to find one of these locally or someplace where you can drive and pick it up, great. If not, then uh, be prepared to pay 50 or 60 bucks to have it shipped to you. All in, this window was like a hundred and 2535 I think not terrible not great not terrible yeah that's what's gonna go in the front so the way that we do that is uh, it has a lip that is smaller on the inside and larger on the outside so what I wind up doing is I'll hold it this up to the front of the gypsy wagon and then I will usually I'll brace it on the bottom with a couple um, pieces of um, you know, two by threes or something like that just because it's hard to hold and trace at the same time. Again, working solo. Um, and you, what you want to do is you want to trace this, this outer, this outer, well, the inner edge, basically. You want to trace this onto the front of the gypsy wagon, obviously centered, leveled, all that stuff. And once you do that, you have what you need to cut out. You cut that out. If you do it right, you can push this whole window in and then this outer lip, which is larger than the inner, still covers up you know, where you cut and you can put silicone and, and sealant in there. And then uh, that forms a nice tight bond against the exterior of the gypsy wagon, creates that seal that you're looking for. Now some of these windows, have some imperfections in them. Uh, if you can see that, but 
there's a bit of a dent in there. So I'm going to try to flatten that out as best as I can. This is aluminum. Yeah, because you want it to sit flush on the, on the wall. Otherwise, you're going to create gaps and, you know, that'll be bad in terms of moisture and water getting in and so forth. So you don't want that. So yeah, so we're going to cut this next, center it, take our time with, with figuring out where we need to cut. And then we're going to do that. And hopefully this will pop right in. Again, in a, bit, in a little bit of a reversal, well, once we have that shape cut out, once this drops into that cutout, we have this lip. What we're going to do is we're going to frame up the back of this. So we're going to surround the part that winds up on the inside with some 2x3 uh, that we're going to mount, again, to the, to the uh, exterior surface there on the inside, though. What we will do at that point is have a surface or have, have something that screws can actually bite into. So if we drill through this outer lip, we put, you know, let's say eight or nine screws through this outer lip, those screws will go through the, the front plywood, but we want, we want them to hold a little bit more than that. We want to give the window a little bit more support than that. So what we want is for those screws to actually go into like a two by three and grab in there. So hence the framing of the window. This construction process is a little bit backwards, just like we put the, uh, the sheathing on uh, the front and the back. Now we're going to uh, drop in the window and then we're going to frame out the window. Normally it'd be the other way around. You'd put, do the framing, you'd have the rough opening for the window, and then you'd put on the sheathing. This is actually done in reverse. So we start with the sheathing, we do the cutout for the window, then we know how we, we need to frame the window. And that's just how this is done because that makes more sense. I didn't have this window when I first started this build. I only have it now. So that way you're not hindered or held up or don't need to have all the pieces necessarily. For the side windows, I did have to know that they were gonna be 12 by 12s, and they are. And so I left um, relevant spacing in the framing of the side of the gypsy wagon and those will hopefully fit right in. Anyway, a little bit about RV windows. All right, I'm ready to add in the window in the front here, and I have it set up. What I did is I marked the, the exact middle of the wall, because you want the window in the middle, most likely. And then I created this, uh, this small prop, which effectively raises the window up off of this lip, right in the middle. The window itself conveniently has uh, this middle bar that runs down the middle of the window. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it into place. I've got the, the level on top of the window and what that will show me is, is the window level, the upright piece will show me is the window in the middle and then once it's level and in the middle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to go around the exterior of the window here as best I can to try to delineate where the cutout needs to be. Once I have that, I'll double check the measurements one more time from the sides. I won't be able to draw that line where the level is up top, so I'll probably connect that line and just you know make sure that the outline is fully there. And once, once that's in place, and once I'm happy that it's in the middle and centered and level and everything, I can start thinking about cutting that shape out. That's the process, that's where we're at, and that's what's gonna happen next. Okay, so I have sort of a rough sketch of the window. It's a little bit tough because, well, it's hard to get that angle right. Some of the window kind of sticks out a little bit. So the lines aren't exact, and this is gonna be one of those things where you're gonna to wanna to cut sort of conservatively, see where you're still missing stuff, and then you know cut a second time, check it again until the window finally fits in there because the last thing you want to do is cut too large of a hole and have you know gaps that extend beyond the outer edge where it's you know, going to be impossible to fix this so that's where we're at i'm going to take some pictures of this this should give me a, a, a general idea and, and like i said i'm going to measure you know from the side of the line that i made to the um, to the 
the edge here, do the same on the other side, you know, top and bottom and all that stuff and make sure everything's centered. All right, so I'm happy with the way the line looks. Measurements are, you know, make sense in terms of distance from edge and so forth. Centered, leveled, you know, the, the line, there's, a, you know, I went around it with a pencil a couple times. I'm gonna go with the innermost line as the first cut. That will allow for the subsequent cuts to expand on this if need be based on how you know the fitting of it goes. Next up, we're gonna drill a hole through here to get the, uh, the jigsaw started. And then we're just gonna go around and cut this out. not to break the window during this whole process. That's it. I've sanded this out a little bit. It's had a really rough edge. Well, it still does. So it's been sanded. What I'm going to do next is apply a really nice thick coat of the green paint because we have a lot of exposed plywood again that we don't want to have be exposed. So I'm going to soak and saturate that as best I can to seal it. Once that's done and dry, we can uh, think about popping this window in. As I said uh, previously, what's going to happen is once the window is in, we're going to do some framing on the back side of this so that when we drill through the frame of the window that the uh, screws go into something. So this is going to have, uh, you know, imagine this is a 2x3, it's not, but the 2x3 is going to go kind of back in here or more visually like back in there and then you have a frame to this window, lends more support. We need to uh, shore this part too. There's going to be something that goes on the back of that to close up that seam. Same thing down here on the bottom. Because if you remember, we had uh, two sheets of plywood that are connected vertically here. So, so yes, paint, seal up those things, window in, probably hold it in place with like one screw. Then we're going to frame out the back side of this. It got hot all of a sudden. 
<laughs> All right, it's front window time. We'll bring the camera around there in a second. The cutout is there. We're gonna do a nice thick uh, border of silicone around the edge. The edge of the cutout where the window's gonna go so that we're sealing that, that complete edge. And then we're probably gonna do an edge along the frame of the window itself. So in other words, I'm gonna put some silicone on the actual trailer. I'm gonna put some onto the window, sort of slightly different areas. And then I'm gonna slot the window into place and uh, bolt it into position with one or two screws. Make sure everything's straight, make sure everything's good. And then I'm gonna to continue to drill the, the, uh, the other couple holes through the frame. But uh, as we've discussed before, once that's in there, we need to do the, the back framing of it. So I didn't really get any good video of the framing of the uh, front window on the interior, but here in this clip, you can see how it's framed out in the two by threes. That gives you a mounting surface uh, for the screws to attach into from the exterior. Corners are rounded, so you can have that little gap there, but that's how it looks.